Mastering relative pronouns in restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. Hello language enthusiasts, and welcome back to another episode of our English grammar series. Today, we're diving into the world of relative clauses, specifically focusing on restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. Our prime tool? Relative pronouns. Let's unravel the mysteries behind them and enhance your English grammar skills. Before we jump into the core concepts, let's ensure we understand what relative clauses are. They are types of dependent clauses that provide extra information about a noun mentioned earlier in the sentence. The words, who, which, that, among others, usually introduce these clauses. There are two types of relative clauses, restrictive and non-restrictive. Restrictive clauses provide vital information necessary for understanding the sentence. For example, the books that are on the table are mine. Without the clause, that are on the table, we wouldn't know which books the speaker is talking about. Non-restrictive clauses, on the other hand, give additional information that is not essential to the sentence's overall meaning. For instance, my car, which is red, is in the parking lot. The color of the car isn't necessary for understanding the sentence, it's extra information. When dealing with restrictive clauses, we generally use the relative pronouns who, whom, that, and which. Who and whom are for people with who as the subject and whom as the object. E.g., the man who called you is my friend. That and which are for things with that often used in conversational English. E.g., I need a book that can help me with my project. Note that in restrictive clauses, relative pronouns are not always mandatory, particularly with that. For example, the car I bought yesterday is new, is just as acceptable as the car that I bought yesterday is new. In non-restrictive clauses, we primarily use who, whom, and which. The usage rules are the same as restrictive clauses, but there is one critical difference. We never use that in non-restrictive clauses. Also, these clauses should always be separated from the rest of the sentence by commas. E.g., my brother, who lives in Canada, is visiting me next month. In non-restrictive clauses, relative pronouns cannot be omitted. And that's a wrap on using relative pronouns in restrictive and non-restrictive clauses. By mastering these, you can make your English more precise and varied. Practice what we've learned today in your daily conversations and writings, and you'll see improvement in no time. Until next time, keep learning, keep growing, and remember, language is a journey, not a destination.